entitled my message Living in the End Times. But today I was coming home with my children, uh, you know, coming over here. The Holy Ghost uh, started dealing with me. Uh, myself, I don't know about any of you, sometimes when the Holy Spirit is dealing with me, I literally go in a position where I feel like my whole body is shaking. Yeah. And I know, you know, I thank God that my wife has been gone this time, but I, I miss her so dear. But there have been some visitation in my life. And the message is, the, the Lord told me to change this. I'll be still speaking about the end time to speak about we are living in the borrowed time. We're living in the borrowed time. You know, like you borrow the money to someone. That money, you know, if you borrow $10,000, that $10,000 is not yours as long as you live. You may have $10,000, you must deduct that there's a $10,000 that doesn't belong to me. If you borrowed, you know, 50000 you may have a million dollars. No matter what you have, you owe a $50,000. And a number of us, we are living in the borrowed time. And the borrowed time that we are living in, in, in they are very dangerous. We are living in prayerless time, whereby Jesus Christ can come at any time. And we have never realized under the church, we have joined ourselves into the situation whereby we have accepted the star of the world and they see it as the acceptable normal way of living. And I believe God is calling us out of how the world is living to how God wants us to live. Yeah. I have been in total, you know, I have spent nights and the nights crying. Last, that three nights ago, I don't know whether I was in a vision or anything, but I walk out of my bed and I, I know I wasn't dreaming because I was seeing what was happening in my room. I was seeing the bed and everything. And the Lord started showing me into the hearts of the people, into the inner cities, in the bondage that is going on. And the Lord began to tell me, he says, I know the message that I'm about to start teaching is going to be very crucial and it's going to be very difficult. But I'm going to speak this message because I know that this is the time where God wants us to be. Matthew chapter 24, and I want to speak on these end times that we are in. The Bible says, if we will mourn, the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the crowds of heaven with the power of great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet and a call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds for, from one end of the heavens to another. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender, its leaves come out. Now verse 24 tells us Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came to him to call his attention to its beauty. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone. That's 24 verses 1. Do you see, verse 2, do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the mountain of Oreos, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For men will come in my name claiming I am Messiah. For many, for many will come in my name claiming I'm what? I am Messiah. And I will, and they will deceive many. You will hear of wars and the rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not allowed. Now I want you to see this. Men will come and they'll say they are what? Jesus. They are Messiahs. And you hear the walls and
And the rumors of wolves do not be what? Alarmed. Because that's not the end. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. All these wolves that we hear, it's not saying Jesus is coming. Those things are coming, but to alarm us. Nation will rise against nations, and the kingdom against kingdom. There will be fem femines and the earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birthday. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and then put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. And at that time men will turn away from the faith. And they will betray and hate each other. And the how men and the many false prophets. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testament to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. And then let those who are in Judea free to the mountains. Let no one on the housetops go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to their club. How dreadful it will be in those days. Huh. Now, I want to remind you that the day and the hour of the unknown <coughs> is near. The day and the hour of the unknown is near. And the number of us, we have been put in a position whereby we are not realizing what is ahead of our lives. We have taken, because we have taken the things of God so lightly without the reverence and the fear yeah. of where God is, is warning us. The parable of the ten virgins is one of the parables that it shows us very clear that there was a time ten virgins. And the one, five of the virgins, they're wise, and the five, they're foolish. Five, they cared mostly about the things of the world. And the five cared mostly about what God was about to do. Five, they came with their lamp filled and the spare all to put on. But five, they said, we know. We have been promised again and again that he's going to come. But he has never come before. And we don't believe that one day you ever come. But I want to encourage each and every one of us, Jesus is coming. Now, Amen. I want to encourage you to understand something. What does it mean to live in the end times? Or what does it mean to live in the border of time? For 2,000 years, people have wondered about the events and the times and when Jesus will return. Ever since I was born, I was taken to the church whereby I heard the preacher preaching about the returning of Jesus. I heard the preacher speaking about the hell. I heard the minister say all these kind of things. But as I began to grow up at the age of 18, I began to wonder. I've been young, now I'm 18, I thought I was so grown, I haven't seen Jesus return. I haven't even seen the signs coming. So I took to do the things that I felt that be fitting to me. Now, the, Jesus is coming. The Bible says a thousand years to God is a day. A day to God is a thousand years. Themes such as millennium, tribulation, 666, Antichrist are used in the medias, in the malls, in the movies, in the theaters, in the restaurants. And the people that think this is just a job. And when you begin to start realizing and looking where we are, somewhere in Europe, next week I'll be having all these church where they have already put some chips on some of the kids to, to test them so that when they go to the shops, you know, they can, they can be identified. Now, the enemy has come in a very crafty and a soft killing method. And that method that they are doing is that you don't, you don't need to go through the line to withdraw your money. We'll put a chip inside you. But when you look inside of that chip, there is an engravement of 666. We are already there, saints. We begin to see the hand of the enemy coming to deceive, 
choice was yours. And as you are there making the choice, God will not hold you accountable to what you have made the choice of. You have either made the choice to run away from the things of God and entertain the world, or you have made a choice to serve God faithful. But as for me and my household, this day I choose that I'm going to serve God faithful. I'm going to teach the things of the living God. I'm not going to look backwards or sideways or in another direction, but I fear the Lord is faithful. I walk circumspectly and I honor the name of Jesus Christ above all things. I wish somebody can help me here. Just 
time that we are in. The fact that no one knows the day or the hour. Amen. It can be today. Yes. It can be another day. It can be tomorrow, it can be next week, it can be next month. But no one knows. You and I, we are living on the borrowed time. Yes. When you owe someone money, he can come and harass you at any point when you're not expecting him to do that. You can be in the midst of your friend and someone will come to you and say, I need my money now. You borrowed that man. I used to love to do that when I was young and not say I was a little bit physical fit and I would also enjoy a little bit of rumble in the jungle. <laughs> I'm going fight in the heartbeat. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. So, I, you know, people that will come to me and they borrow some money, you know, that's a hidden way. I'll say, I'll borrow you, you know, I'll borrow you, you know, fifty dollars, you give me fifty dollars more. So I'll go there, you know, when he's walking with his girlfriend, you know, we were young, I said that I need my hundred dollars. So my friend will say, you know, I'll not give you. I said today we'll settle it. I know I will win the fight. Today we'll settle it right here, not tomorrow, not anywhere else. I'll beat you or you beat me and you give me my fifth, my hundred dollars. And that's why a number of the people have their girlfriends give me the money because I was serious and I, I went into some shoe fights because I needed the money. But you know that Jesus is not going to come and fight us like that. But we're living in that borrowed time when Jesus will say, I give you every minute, every second, every life that you're breathing upon the face of the earth is a borrowed moment. If I live here to be 100 years, or if I live here to be like my father who lived up to the 90s, years, 90 plus years, is still a borrowed time. Right. And at the end of time, I'll be required. If I live to be like my mother who died at the age of 30, it's still a borrowed time. But what I'm trying to say is that let's use our time wisely. Amen. 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 Number four, Jesus promises disciples that he would come again before his return, there would be death pains. How many believe we are going through death pains now? Yeah. We're going, we're in that time of the death pains. Before the many events, here are some signs of the end. Men who claim to be the Messiah. We see a lot of people today that are going around and tell everybody, come, I'm Jesus. You will not be mistaken when you see Jesus. You, we see a lot of people today fighting. Was Jesus white or black or Indian? I don't care what color he was. Oh, what I care is my savior. That's not the point to find out if there was a black Jesus, a black Moses, a black one. That's all nonsense. What I care is that Jesus is my redeemer. He came to save me. He came to redeem me. He came to set me free. And by his precious blood, I'm free me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. People will be deceived by his messiahs, number two. Wars and feminines, earthquakes and pestilence. Now let me show you something. Are we not here in wars? Ukraine and the Russia within Ukraine. The brothers are fighting. Israel. And the Hamas in Palestine, the brothers, they are all brothers fighting against one another. The world, we see the Roman. In 1945, during the Second World War, we saw how Israel was annihilated. And they went into exile. People that died. We have a friend of ours in Florida that is still living up to now, who was part of the Holocaust. When we go to his house, he shares what he went through. And his wife has told us that this man will never share about the events that he went through because it brings him tears. But somehow God is so in the feet that we saw with that man. And the pain he started sharing, the pain that went through him, the brother man by the name of Hitler, that killed the children of Israel in the name of cleansing the nation because they killed the Messiah. And that's not the way how you do the retreat. 
retribution or bring vengeance. They did everything to annihilate them, to destroy them. You know, in the name of killing Jesus. We see a lot of people that are going to use the name of Jesus in order to satisfy their curiosity and their brutality in the mind. But Jesus is still coming back. Believers will be witness of Jesus, will be the witnesses of Jesus, even as they will speak to leaders, to kings, to great leaders. I have had an opportunity to go and lay hands on one of the governors in this part of the world in the United States and to pray for him to go in the office. I had an opportunity to pray for the senator in this country and lay hands on him and to go to be part of a leader. I had an opportunity to pray for the leaders in other parts of the world where one of the presidents in the other country in, in South Korea called me and I prayed with him on the floor. I have had an opportunity to pray for the leaders and I believe these are the end times that God is opening to the body of Christ. Men will turn away from the faith. You know, do you know that these, these people, they go to where there's camouflage and it looks so good? Yes. You know, you go there, everything, the lighting system looks so well, everything, and you sit in there. You know, you're not going for God, you're just going for fame by identification. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going there for association. And then there are storefront churches where they're preaching the truth. And the righteousness of God is raining down. Nobody is going to hear them because they don't have the grit and the ground. And the richest men, they do not go to that part of the church. And then we go there for fame by identification. I'd rather stand alone and they preach the truth of Jesus Christ and declare, stay under the mountain, stay under the truth, but never recant to the truth, the faithful word of God. Not many people today the they go to some of these mega churches they are going because Jesus is there. They are going to truth to see how they can be identified. If you ask him, you would say, when you die, where are you going to go? They will not even tell you where they will go. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. God is calling his church to repent. And I'm a voice warning you, but I'm not John's voice. I'm David Shamendi. Amen. Amen. I'm not warning you like John warned you. Yes. I'm warning you. I'm warning you with the new river that God is giving. Yes. There's going to be an increase in wickedness, mm -hmm. betrayals, people that will betray you before you realize. Friends, families, relatives, children—they'll betray their families, their parents, everybody. There'll be mega betrayals, but it says. Do not be alarmed because time is coming. Today in the morning we heard how his stepson went and stole things and pawned them in his name. That's a family member. And we are talking about what God is about. Fearful events and the signs from heaven. We have been hearing of sounds that the people they are hearing. Make them the loud sounds that awakens everybody. People they wake up, they hear them in the stadiums. You know, I was speaking to another man of God yesterday in South Africa. He said that there was an earthquake. People died in South Africa. Not too long ago, there was the snow in South Africa. Things we are seeing, unusual weather. Not too long ago, some few days here, it was very cold, like we are in the fall. I'm wanting to let you know that the signs are coming to that point. And the politicians, they are telling us, is science evolution, the earth is revolving around. Don't hear what the politicians lie, they say. That's right. They don't read this way. That's right. What is happening is not global warming. What is happening is Jesus coming down. I have scriptures that I can prove to anyone that he says this is global warming. This is nonsense. There's no global warming.
say you know me, not even the Son of Man, Jesus. But concerning the day and the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven. That's what the Bible says. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. Who? The Father only. Here are some key signs to the end of time. Jerusalem surrounded by armies. What are we talking? Have we not seen locusts thrown to Jerusalem? Jerusalem surrounded by armies. The abomination of desolation. Desolation. These days, in these United States, there are countries that have accepted the things that are abominable. When I was young, being born in Africa, my mother or my father hate to say this is this person is like this. They will cast me out and disown me from the family. And these days we have come to the point where we agree those things. Those things they are not allowed to be preached in the church today. We have all accepted. Saints, we are the salt of the world. And if we are the salt of the world, we lose the savor. Then the world will take over. That's right. We have come to the point where the world is taking over. Whilst we are watching with our two naked eyes and agree with the world rather than be the salt. It makes me cry. To see how the devil has stolen the glory of God. I remember days when I walked in the house of the living God. I tell my mother, I'm afraid to go to the church. In those 11 years when I was really growing with my mother, I could fear, I said, Mama, I don't want to go to that church. Jesus will kill me. Fear. Holy reverence. I walked in the church with a total reverence, knowing who God is. I remember my daddy telling me, he says, Jesus doesn't kill, Jesus loves you. Amen. He's going to protect you. Amen. And I remember saying, the pastor scares me. So when he began to speak the glory of God, these days the messages have changed. We are okay as we love one another. We shall be accepted in the beloved. From all wickedness. This is a generation that have all godliness but denying the power of God. We have the form of godliness, but we have denied the power of God. Saints, I want to encourage each and everyone. Let it be your assignment. Don't be brought into the world. Don't be poured in the world. Stand faith. You know why I refuse to be a politician, despite how many times I've had an opportunity to be a politician? Because I want to prophesy to the scene of compromise. I'll never take sides with any government opposition, Republican or Democrat. I take side of him. I'm an ambassador who is living on a borrowed time and on a mission called the earth. And I'm going to declare what is written in the Bible, regardless of who is in the office or who is out of 